Daily Wisdom and Prayers Proverbs chapter 6 NIV version Warnings against folly My son, if you have put up security for your neighbor, if you have shaken hands in pledge for a stranger, you have been trapped by what you said and snapped by the words of your mouth. So do this, my son, to free yourself since you have fallen into your neighbor's hand, go to the point of exhaustion and give your neighbor no rest, allow no sleep to your eyes, no slumber to your eyelids, free yourself like a gazelle from the hand of the hunter, like a bird from the snare of the fowler. Go to the end, you sluggard, consider his ways and be wise. He has no commander, no overseer or ruler, yet he stores his provisions in summer and gathers his food at harvest. How long will you lie there, you sluggard? When will you get up from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. And poverty will come on you like a thief, and scarcity like an armed man. A troublemaker and a villain who goes about with a corrupt mouth, who winks maliciously with his eye, signals with his feet, and motion with his fingers, who plots evil with deceit in his heart, he always stir up conflict. Therefore disaster will overtake him in an instant, he will suddenly be destroyed without remedy. There are six things the Lord hates, seven that are detestable to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked schemes, feet that are quick to rush into evil, a false witness who pours out lies, and a person who stirs up conflict in the community. Warning against adultery My son, keep your father's command and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Buy them always on your heart, fasten them around your neck. When you walk, they will guide you. When you sleep, they will watch over you. When you awake, they will speak to you. For this command is a lamp, this teaching is a light, and correction and instruction are the way to life. Keeping you from your neighbor's wife, from the smooth talk of a wayward woman. Do not last in your heart after her beauty, or let her captivate you with her eyes. For a prostitute can be had for a loaf of bread, but another man's wife preys on your very life. Can a man scoop fire into his lap without his clothes being burned? Can a man walk on hot coals without his feet being scorched? So is he who sleeps with another man's wife. No one who touches her will go unpunished. People do not despise a thief if he steals to satisfy his hunger when he is starving. Yet, if he is caught, he must pay sevenfold, though it costs him all the wealth of his house. But a man who commits adultery has no sense, whoever does so destroys himself. Blows and disgrace are his lot, and his shame will never be wiped away. For jealousy arouses a husband's fury, and he will show no mercy when he takes revenge. He will not accept any compensation, he will refuse a bribe, however great it is. If you like the sharing, please click the like button and subscribe to this channel. Sharing time Proverbs chapter 6 verse 16 to 19 says there are six things the Lord hates, seven that are detestable to Him. So this part of the Bible is like a little puzzle. Six things can be, become seven items. So if you look at the verses, a lying tongue and a false witness who pour out lies can be combined to this thing called being a liar. All right, so all in all, six things the Lord hates and seven that are detestable to him. So don't do these things because God hates it. And, you know, if you have done something wrong, repent and let the Lord forgive you. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 1 to 5, talk about this thing called uh, don't be a guarantor or don't become a surety for somebody else. All right, so if you look at the different version, uh, I was reading from the NIV version. If you look at the NASB version, it says, my son, if you have become a guarantor for your neighbor, all right, or have given a handshake for a stranger. 
and in the Amplified Bible it says, My son, if you have become surety, guarantee a debt or obligation for your neighbor, if you have given your pledge for the debt of a stranger or another outside your family. All right. So Bible go on to say what you should do. But before looking at what you should do, maybe uh, understanding of what the word mean will help you. So a guarantor is a person or thing that gives or acts as a guarantee. Okay. And a surety is a person who takes responsibility for another person's performance of an undertaking. For example, uh, they are appearing in court or paying a debt. So this is what it means to be a guarantor or to be a surety for someone else. The Bible makes it clear that we are not to be a guarantor or be a surety for someone. And if we have done it, the instruction is this. Quickly go to them and ask them to release you from being their guarantor or being their surety. Okay, you have to do that. The other part I want to touch on is Proverbs chapter 6, verse 20 to 29. Again, the Lord warns us against adultery in these verses. And if you remember in Proverbs chapter 5, right, the whole chapter is talking about adultery and the danger of being involved in an adultery or affair. So let us pray right now. Father Lord, we want to thank you for your word and instruction for today. That God, we remind ourselves that there are six things you hate and seven things that is very detestable for you. We don't want to do those things that make you upset with us. Forgive us if we have ever done it. And Lord, forgive us and help us to live our life right and righteously. Lord, we also want to come before you and if we have, you know, act as a guarantor for someone or, you know, offer to be a surety for them. Lord, we pray for your intervention right now. We pray for your favor that when we go to them, they will release us from being their guarantor for their debt or their loan in the name of Jesus, Lord. And Father, we remind ourselves again that we do not want to stray from, you know, our marriage, we want to stay faithful to our spouse and we do not want to fall into the trap and the danger of adultery or affair. And so Father, we get, thank you God that you are here watching over us and we just pray right now for our day to be blessed. Father, we pray that Lord, we will have a blessed day. We give thanks that you hear our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, the verse of the day is Proverbs chapter 6, verse 10 to 11. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. And poverty will come on you like a thief, and scarcity like an armed man. Alright, I like this verse because it reminds us of the need to be diligent, alright? To be hardworking. If not, we will have to bear the consequence of our laziness. Right now, let's do a quick recap of all the verses we have read. Proverbs chapter 5, verse 21, For your ways are in full view of the Lord, and He examines all your paths. Proverbs 4, verse 23, New Living Translation says, Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to 6 say, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your path straight. Proverbs 2 verse 6 For the Lord gives wisdom, from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Proverbs 1 verse 5, King James Version A wise man will hear and will increase learning and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. Proverbs 1 verse 4, New King James Version To give prudence to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. Proverbs 1 verse 23, NIV Version Repent at my rebuke, then I will pour out my thoughts to you, I will make known to you my teachings. Thank you so much for joining me in this daily Proverbs reading. I wish you a blessed, fruitful day. The Lord bless you and keep you and grant you shalom, peace, 
and everything you put your hand to work is fruitful, is productive, is blessed. In Jesus' name, Amen.